What's happening, YouTube? It's your boy, CB. We are back for another Huddle Watch Along on the channel. On today's episode, I have one of the baddest receivers in the 2025 class. Four-star receiver from Western, Kobe Howard. Easily one of the nastiest skill sets you'll see. Uncoverable one-on-one. 50-50 balls dominates him. After the catch, dynamic, electric. I have watched games myself where everyone in the stands knew this young man was getting the football and still was unstoppable. But you don't want to hear me tell it. You want to hear from Kobe himself. So without further ado, four-star receiver in the 2025 class, Kobe Howard. How's it going, bro? Uh, it's, it's going great, you know. We just was at the Florida versus Tennessee game the other day. You know, I've just been vibing, getting my ankle better, and just, you know, been having a time down here. That's a that's got to be fun for you. You you a couple of visits in a row. What was that atmosphere like? Before we get into one that my fan base probably wants to hear about first, but you just coming off of in SEC country, big game Saturday night. What was that like being there watching Florida versus Tennessee? Man, the atmosphere was electric, bro. After the game, my head was hurting. It was so it was so loud there, and you know Florida really shocked me. I didn't expect them to look like they did and I expected Tennessee to look way better but Florida really changed the offense around they changed a lot of stuff around after that loss versus Utah that 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 quick turnaround we were talking a little bit beforehand you can either when you start a season like that you can either fold to that pressure start believing the clippings or you can respond and I think it don't matter who you are watching that game you you can see all right Florida they realized their back were against the wall. They came out a completely different team, completely different offense. Dominated on the ground, too. ETN had a game. I would imagine, yeah, head hurt, and that place was probably jumping, right? Yeah, it was definitely jumping. After the game, I was telling my parents that my head was hurting. And while we were on the <laughs> car ride back home, I fell asleep and was like, because it was loud. He, but, hey, that's... That's what South Florida is. And I would imagine you 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 used to loudness because you've played in big games and you've been to big games. You were at another big game recently, Miami versus Texas A&M. What was that atmosphere like? How was that like being at that game, Miami's first big opponent of the year? The Miami game was crazy. Miami looked really good that day versus Texas A&M. They were offense clicking on all cylinders. Uh, they threw a lot of touchdowns. I like watching teams throw touchdowns. The defense was <laughs> on on point. They were doing their thing, and I just feel like Miami really changed the program around from the last couple of years, and I'm excited to watch them as the season progresses. And you're someone that, that, that has had a relationship with Coach Cristobal, with Coach KB. For you, I would imagine you've heard them tell you what it's going to look like, right? What the offense will look like. They're telling you, hey, this is what we plan on doing. When you got to see it for the first time, what was it exactly how you thought it would look in your head when you're picturing, okay, how would I look in this? Oh, yes, most definitely. Coach Beer was telling me that, you know, they're going to they're gonna throw the ball and throw the ball a lot too. So, you know, me just being out there seeing and picturing me out there in their offense and what I could and could do. You know, it was a very, very good thing to do. Just, you know, hearing what coaches say and it actually being true and not them not just trying to sell you something and just get you there. That's why I think it's cool that, like, for both schools, for Florida and for Miami, to tell you, hey, come watch. Because we can tell you all day long, hey, this is what we plan on doing with our receivers. You could probably do what he's doing this year. And you can go, okay, cool, that, that sounds good. For them to say, all right, now come watch a live game. So you can sit on the sideline and watch number three, bro, because that's what we're talking about for you. We're talking about you could be like him. That's got to be a different or a cooler experience, too, because you're sitting there watching the game, obviously soaking in the experience, but you also watching the receivers like, what route he running? Yeah, I probably bust somebody on that route. Like, I probably look nasty there. So, like, I, I, I think that is so important. I think people forget how important that is for a young man to be up close and get to see the offense, see how the quarterback runs it. Are they changing receivers out? Like he like he said, everybody get a little touch. Is everybody getting a little touch? Are the freshmen getting in? I think it is important to be able to go to a game and see that. Yeah, most definitely. That's why I try to go to a lot of games just to do my scouting point of view of the teams and see what offense they're running and see if what they're selling me is really what's going on. And that's why I've been 
trying to go to a lot of games. This weekend, I'm going to go see LSU versus Arkansas. You know, just just going to go from there. That Arkansas quarterback, bro, KJ Jefferson. That's a big dude. That's a big. Yeah, dude. I heard of it. Yeah, I've heard about him. I haven't gotten to watch him in prison though. So it's Saturday. Yeah, you're gonna enjoy fun. that one. You're gonna enjoy that. So when you're looking at Coach Guidry's, uh, Coach Dawson, excuse me, his offense, and we look at a receiver who's got a skill set like you. So y'all, we gonna start with his sophomore highlights. But he ended up transferring schools to a different school this year. So we're going to get into that in a second because his first game for them, by the way, was a stat line that don't really make sense. It sounds like something you would do in Madden. It's like eight catches for 200 yards at half. We're going to get into that in a second. But this is sophomore tape from Kobe who does a little bit of everything as a receiver. When you see speed receivers a lot or guys that have that vertical ability, they're not always crisp route runners, but you are a very, very sound route runner. And then that there, bro, 50-50 balls. How 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 excited do you get when you know your quarterback going to give you a chance like this? Oh, I get very excited. I love when the quarterback just gives me a chance 50-50 ball. I always tell my quarterbacks, whenever it's 50-50, just throw it up. I'm going to come down with it. So he threw it up, and, you know, I just made a play on it like I'm supposed to do. How long do you feel it takes to build that trust with a quarterback to where he knows, all right, Kobe out there, I can put this thing up? Because he's not going to do me no harm. If he don't catch it, nobody catching it. Yeah, it takes it takes some time with it. I mean, quarterbacks, they don't want to throw picks. So it's going to take some time for them to build that relationship with you. And when you when they see that you're just making plays, then it's like, okay, I can throw him 50-50 balls and he'll come down with them. Let me tell you to trust your quarterback got in here because he saw this screen looking like it was about to be blown up and he still threw you this football. That tells me that he got trust in you because when he looks to his left, this screen don't look favorable, but he still said to himself, ah, that's Kobe out there. Yeah. when And then in that open screen, space. Yeah. When he threw that screen, I just had to make a play. The safety was trying to tackle me. I just stiffed on him. I didn't want to do too much because, you know, there's – other defense defenders pursuing to the ball. So I just stayed outside and scored. Your ability after the catch, it's very running back sometimes when I'm, when I'm watching you. Did you play running back earlier in Little League or earlier in your football career? Yeah, all Little League, I played running back. I didn't right, start playing yeah. receiver until uh, freshman year in high school. What was it about receiver that, that drew you to it? Uh, I couldn't really tell you. I don't. I just went into high school just knowing that I didn't want to play running back and take all those hits from big D linemen and all the other stuff. So I felt like having me on the perimeter against the DBs and safeties and stuff, I could make stuff work better. This catch here, bro, people who have never ran a route like this have no idea how hard it is to be running full speed and to have to adjust to this. Not a badly thrown ball, not a terribly thrown ball, but to still have to adjust and make that catch running full speed, that's another asset you have quite a bit where you got the catch radius of like a 6'5 receiver, whether he's putting it up behind you a little bit low. It seems like you've got, a, you've got an insane catch radius to where if he gets it in your area, typically you're going to come down with it. Yeah, I mean, me and my dad talk about that a lot. He just tells me that I got to have a big catch radius just playing receiver in general. If you don't have a big catch radius, then you can't be one of the greats at receiver because mainly all receivers do is catch the ball. So if you can't catch 50-50 balls or contort your body to catch difficult balls, then you can't be one of the greats at receiver. And one, another thing I love about your game in the open field, you got good vision. You can see that vision, elusive ankle breaker but you'll also put your shoulder down bro like you also not a, you're not scared of contact you're not scared to get physical you still carry some of those running back traits with you in the open field yeah yeah most definitely i feel like i'm one of the bigger guys at receivers so i can take on his i can lower my shoulder i can juke whenever i need to i just feel like i've worked on all this stuff so when come game time, I have all the attributes that I need to make people miss or, you know, lower my shoulder or whatever I need to do. So for a guy that, again, here's another great adjustment. This is that catch radius you're talking about here. 
reaching behind you, losing no acceleration, bouncing off of a tackle, physical, looking like a running back finishing a run there. So you do it in a couple different ways. Blow the top off the defense, and then you'll still take a jailbreak, you know what I'm saying, and turn a, and turn a three-yard pass into a 70-yard highlight. For you, what's more fun, the jailbreak that you can take a little pass and turn it into your quarterbacks throwing a 70 yard touchdown or a ball here where you can get a 50 50 ball, go up, make a big play. Uh, I feel like what's more fun is the jailbreak screens, you know, just being able to make people miss and show off speed and all this other stuff. It, it takes a lot to take a jailbreak 70 yards. So I feel like it shows the athleticism that I have and all the work I've been putting in in all season. I feel like that that's a part of uh, of your skill set that you got that's just special that everyone don't have. Now you do got raw burners that if they if they get a crease they're gone. But for you you have that ability where you can make two three guys miss in the phone booth and then turn on the afterburners and get gone. It seems like a weapon like that you can use anywhere on the outside in the slot. And then just as a true number one receiver on the outside going up the ladder here running a great route, and, and with someone like you with that speed, these 10-yard comeback, these curls, I bet they're fun for you because corners get to bail in. The second, the second they think you're going deep, they bail in, and then you drop your hips, smooth out your break, and then ball a little bit high, no problem, strong hands, make the catch, take on the hit. That's textbook. That is exactly how you would write that up to teach it. Yeah, I mean the the throw wasn't ideal, but you know I got to make the make a play for my quarterback. Throws aren't gonna always be perfect because nobody's perfect. Uh, you know, it's like looks like they're in a cover three defense, so I just pushed them vertical and snapped my hips down and just made a play on the ball. For you, for someone who runs these routes so smooth like you do, so crisp like you do, how important was it when you started making that transition to receiver? Great adjustment here, too. Sometimes you got to make something out of nothing, right? It ain't going to always look pretty. But that concentration yeah. there to stay with that football and continue to make that play, that's brilliant. Yeah, it was a very wet game. It had just rain. I think it was raining during that play right there. I was trying to just catch the ball, and it ended up bouncing off my pad, so I had to stay with it and just make a play. So what I was going to say about your route running – Kobe, is you you run almost perfect, crisp, smooth routes. And for someone that didn't always play receiver, what was it about route running that that felt either natural to you, or what was it that made it click for you? Um, just working on it, really. When I first started running routes, it was pretty difficult for me. I I can't lie about that just working on it every day, just trying to perfect my craft and watching people like Justin Jefferson and just doing what they do in the backyard, just working on it and perfecting my craft on it what got me better at route running. I it, It's one of those things that's like, like blocking, right? It, it's a want to. You have to it, – it's very easy for someone with your talent to slack on a route because most, most DBs can't handle your speed anyway, right? But it's it, it's that competitiveness that – I got I to gotta make sure this go route looks like this 100% of the time. I need to make sure my stem on everything looks like this go route 100% of the time because then when I do want to start breaking this thing off, I got this cornerback flipping his hips, and you know what it's like. Once I got you flipping your hips, guessing, looking crazy, you in my, you in my back pocket for the rest of the game. Yeah, most well, definitely. When I'm running routes, I always – like a slant, you can't just run a slant. You always got to get a DB to open his hips up and stuff like that. Or like when you're running a, a go ball or something, you can – depends on, you know, your speed. If you know you're not faster than a guy, you got to give him a little more. If you're faster than him, then you just run straight past him. If they're impressed, I mean, just knowing knowing the game, knowing what covers they're in, and knowing yourself can help you with the route running a lot. That – that that mental that you have for the game, that F, that high football IQ, it seems like you study film quite a bit and you study the game. Has that always been a part of your game? Uh, yes, most definitely. I'm always watching film, always 
studying my opponent, studying the DV, seeing what his weaknesses are, and seeing what I can use against him, seeing what he doesn't press, if he throws hands, if he's patient, if he opens his hips up fast. I mean, just knowing all this stuff going into the game helps helps me do what I do and just be the best player I can be on the field. What when did that click for you to because you know uh, young players don't always watch film. When I say young, I mean you know, freshman ninth grade when did you start to realize all right i need to incorporate understanding the game as well as i uh, as i can just dominate from my my raw talent when 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 did film study become a big part of your game film study has always been a big part of my game just because my dad's always been with me and he's always told me this stuff and thought about this stuff we watch we always watch film as a school like every high school does but you know, after watching film with the high school, I just go watch my own film and just study the DBs that I'm playing with and just, you know, look them up, see what they got going on, seeing what their weaknesses is and all that other stuff. I love that because, you know, to, to to be great at anything, you got to put in those extra reps. That, that time at home, like you said, you're going to watch film at school. You're going to watch it with your coaches. But it's those extra reps. It's it's the when I get home, let me watch this one more time. Let me try to find one more tendency. Let me try to find one more thing that I can do to be better than the next person. So this year, bro, transferring to a new school with a new quarterback, new offense, same Kobe, same dominance. So what we see a lot here this year is they use you the same way that we saw in your sophomore film. A little bit of everything. So we see a catch and run here. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the first game of the year, correct? Yeah, it was basically our kickoff class, I guess. So am I correct in assuming this is your first reception at Western? Uh, No, that wasn't my first reception. That was like, I think my third reception of the game. This here absolutely incredible so this is what i mean by taking a taking a hitch spinning to your outside shoulder that's textbook like they teach you and then we just gonna go be a playmaker here spin move nasty and then the afterburners that's what i was talking about earlier making guys missing a phone booth but then having that extra gear to chunk deuce in the open field that's special and went off eight catches over 200 yards in the first half. What was this first game like for you with your with your new teammates? Uh, I mean, the first game was great. Me and David were clearing on all cylinders. We all looked good. We you know we were playing against Stone and Douglas. They weren't the best team, but I feel like it was a good game for us that we had, you know, just to start off. And we all looked good. I was throwing to the other receiver. The defense was clicking off the line. We looked really good that game. And it's a good introduction, right? To like we talked about earlier, you can you, you can draw up an offense, you can look at an offense, but you need to see it, you need to feel it, you need to you need some live in game reps so that everyone can start gelling together. I would imagine too, it was just fun to get out there with your new quarterback, new offensive coordinator. You you guys seem to have really good chemistry right off the rip with each other. Can you speak to to what it's like there with your new quarterback this year? Give him a shout out because y'all out there balling together. Uh, yeah, I mean, Davies, he's, he's a great quarterback. When we when I first got down here, we threw almost every day just, you know, building that chemistry together, seeing what we like in trips, backside, whatever route I wanted to run. He told me just give it to him and we're going to connect on it. So, I mean, Davi's a really great quarterback and committed to Virginia Tech. He's going to do really good in college. Just keeps his head down and just keeps working. You can you can see almost instantly it looked like he trusted you. Like from from that very first game, 50-50 balls, jump balls. He he had that early trust in you. That that's something obviously that I would imagine you don't take lightly as a receiver, right? For a quarterback to be like, all right, look, I, you knew, I'm new, we both knew. And for him to put that faith in you, first game of the season, kicking it off, I would imagine that 
that that that helps build that bond for more games going forward. When when you run in that that go route, you doubled, and he he still throw that thing up for you. That's got to feel good too on your end to go. All right, I've earned his trust. I've earned that validation. I mean, yeah, most definitely. Being your quarterback trusting you is the number one thing. A receiver just whenever you're covered, he thinks you're open. He throws he throws it to you like you're open. Just you get to make a play. You get a highlight, and you just show everybody that, you know, you can make those contested catches and you can do all this other stuff and not just catch open balls and when you're wide open and stuff like that because almost everybody can do that. And I like that your offensive coordinator gives you all that freedom too, that he gives you that, all right, if he if he covered, still throw the ball over there because he's never really covered. You just put the ball where somebody else can't get it, and Kobe will come down with it. Here we see you foot fire off the line here. Cornerback gets in your face. No problem. Quick release. Nice back shoulder. Great adjustment here. Physical corner with you, but you don't mind getting physical off the line. Love this. Yeah, I wasn't. I mean, me and Davi worked on our back shoulder a lot. The DB was kind of holding me, so Davi just gave me a back shoulder. I just made a play, and yeah, that was a, that was a great throw by my quarterback. And what I love, 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 love about you, that energy you got on the field when you you when when you get to making plays, and you could tell when a team need a spark too. You are that spark. So I gotta ask, when two out there balling, when you got eight for two hundo. In the first half, are you the kind of player that's quiet? Or are you talking? Uh, I'm not say I'm quiet until people start talking to me. When somebody starts talking to me, then I get chirpy and I start talking a lot, <laughs> and it just it just be on from there. So here again, going try press man. Go ahead, break this down for us because he got in your grill. You know what's coming. He don't. Yeah, uh, this play, I, while we were in the huddle, I told Davi, let's throw fade again because I knew he couldn't guard me. I feel like the first route I ran, I uh, foot fired a little too much since he was impressed. Man, I knew he wasn't faster than me. So I told Davi, as soon as we got out the huddle, I was like, let's RPO, let's RPO this and check fade. He said, okay. I went out there. I didn't give him a release. I just ran past him. Davi made a great throw while getting hit, and that, that was all she wrote. I love that adjustment in your game to realize that first time I foot fired a little bit too much. He actually really just can't run with me. Like, there's no reason for me to give him a little razzle dazzle. He just can't run with me. So now I'm going to just punish him. I, I like that adjustment, that, that on the fly adjustment in your game. Cause it's not just about seeing tendencies in other people. You see in your own tendencies as well. Like, all right, I don't even got to give him that little extra. I'm, I'm, and my quarterback probably don't, he probably need to get rid of this thing a little easier anyway. So let me go ahead and blow past him, give him a quick target. This way he can hang in there for as long as he can. And you set that up, obviously. We see we see the foot fire here. So this is when you say you thought, all right, I probably gave him a little too much. So we come back right here on the next play. And Kobe decides, nah, no more sauce, no nastiness. You just get burners. Yeah, exactly. And I was just and then we go. I'm knowing yeah, I'm knowing that Davi doesn't have that much time in the pocket. And like you said, I just figured I felt I did too much foot fire. And yeah. So how much freedom does y'all's offensive coordinator give y'all? What's the cel hold on? What's the celebration here? You know, I was act I was, you know, fake injury acting like I caught a cramp. <laughs> and I just, you know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So your offensive coordinator, how much freedom does he give you guys out there when y'all see something? Got to pause that. (laughs) How much freedom does he give y'all when y'all see something to go, hey, check out of that? Uh, He he gives us all all the freedom we want, especially, you know, trip backside. When I'm one-on-one, he lets us choose our own routes, and we just got to do us. And – if Davi doesn't like to throw or the safety's rolling over, then he'll work his strip side. 
I, I love that freedom your office of coordinator. I love that. That's that's extreme trust, but that also tells me he knows his guys. He knows, all right, Kobe knows what he's doing. Uh, he, he ain't going to lead me wrong, right? He's not just going to call a fade for himself because it's glory time. He's going to call a fade if the coverage calls for it. So I know I can keep him backside, and he's going to handle that. I, I love that your office of coordinator gives you that freedom. Let me tell you why he gives you that freedom. And it's I paused this because I couldn't talk through this. This is why he gives you that freedom. This just being a dog. Ain't no, <laughs> that's just being a dog. And then just putting on the burners. Bro. Yeah, I mean, th that play, it threw me a little, a little smoke screen to the short side of the field, right? And I remember catching the ball. And I was just looking. I was like, "Wow, there's there's nowhere to go." So I just <laughs> started. I just started running, and then the D lineman was coming at me. So I'm like, "Oh, snap!" And then I just spent off his tackle, and I reversed field, and then I was just making the play. See, this is why I asked earlier. When do you feel like the game started slowing down for you? Because on a play like this, in your head, they're all moving in slow motion. You can see their movements before they make them. And it actually looks like they're moving in slow motion, bro, just that fast. But you can see that with the ball in your hands, it's almost like scientific. It's almost like you start dissecting. Like everything else slows down for you and you're, you're plotting your, your gap. And then once you find your gap, once you find your space, foot in the ground, and then I'm gone. Yeah, my dad... My dad teaches me that a lot. You can't do all that juking and all this other stuff because there's a lot of defenders coming. So it's really just one move and go. I'm, if you have to make a play, then you need to make the play. If you're going to do a lot of juking, then you got to make that play. And, you know, my dad tells me that a lot. Just one move and go. I love that. I, so you, you've mentioned him a couple of times. Go ahead and give him a shout out here because I, I, I can tell that that passion that your pops has from the game from hearing it from you. And that, and when you light up, when you talk about him, is he your why? I like to ask players, like, what's your why, or what, what got you into loving football? Is it, is it your pops? Yeah, my pops. He put put me in football. He said I didn't really like it at first because I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> but as I got as I got older, I started loving football. He pushed me my my whole life until now, just training me even when I didn't want to train, and it, it's all paid off. I love that, I, especially coming from someone who's a, 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 I got that same relationship with my pops. He put a football in my hand when I was a kid, put a baseball in my hand when I was a kid. So but as I'm hearing you say that, I was like, hey, I can see him. I can see you light up when you talk about him. So I love that. And I love that y'all share not not just football, but you could tell he's probably your hardest critique, isn't he? Oh, yeah, most definitely. When I'm in the wrong, he'll definitely tell me I'm in the wrong. But it's just it's just tough love. And, I mean, if he didn't, then it's just he just showing that he doesn't love me. So whenever, you know, I have a bad game or I did something wrong, he'll let me know. And I just got to go face it the next game. But you need those people to keep you grounded, to hold you accountable, right? Because you, you mess around, get seven, seven catches, a buck 46, two touchdowns. But you need someone to tell you, hey, you remember that one you dropped across the middle, though? So you probably would have had eight for like 175 if you ain't dropped that one. Great game, but that drag route, you probably you you probably could have been perfect. You you do need those people in your life that that hold you accountable, that keep you grounded. I, I love that you recognize that too. Yeah, my dad always always tries to keep me grounded. He'll let me know something that I could have did better always. Every game he'll let me know something that I could have did better or something that he didn't like that I did. You just got to take – you just got to learn from it. Just, you know, just some players, they'll argue with you about it or get mad like, oh, I just had a great game. But, you know, there's always room for improvement during every game. There's always something you can get better at. Look, Kobe, we all know you a stud. I think what anyone that has watched this interview has learned, that it's not just on the field that you're elite. You're high football IQ – high high character young man and someone who has a genuine passion for the game like you can tell when you start to reminisce about a play and talk about a play the way you break it down and the way your face lights up that that passion you have for the game that's elite 
everything you do on the field, we all knew it was elite. We didn't see the rival highlights. Like we we saw that. But if any everyone listening here now, I can guarantee you they're probably thinking, yo, this is a five star, just young man at this point. Because when they're recruiting you, it, they're not just recruiting you for what you can do on the field. It's the culture in the locker room. It's being a leader. And to build championships, I say this all the time, you need championship young men. And Kobe Howard is a championship young man. Yes, sir. That's, that's what I try to be. I try to, you know, uplift the locker room. I don't try to be a cancer. You know, sometimes players, players they can be cancer in the locker room, just all about me, me, me. But, you know, I try to, Try not to do that. I try to be uplifting, even though I'm not really the talkative type. You know, I've been trying to work on it, just talk to my teammates and talk to my old linemen because they're there. It starts with them, you know, linemen and then the quarterback, then it's me. So I try to uplift the linemen and, you know, just be that team player. I love that. Look, no matter what school gets you at the next level, that entire fan base about to lose their minds that day you commit because they know they're getting a dog on the field. They getting a number one bona fide number one receiver. And then they're getting a locker room leader, a guy that's going to hold himself and everybody else accountable. You can't lose with players like that in the locker room. You give any coach 20 players like that in a locker room, he going to compete. He going to fight. So I, I, I speak for every fan base, including the Miami Hurricanes, whoever – ends up with Kobe Howard is getting a championship player. Hey, bro, thank you for coming on the channel. I really appreciate it. When you when your season finishes and you get your full junior highlight, we will come back and watch that because I cannot wait to see you cook the rest of these defenses this year. <laughs> but tell them where they can follow you so they can keep up with the rest of your year as well. Uh, on Instagram, Kobe Howard 2, and on Twitter, it's Kobe Howard 3. Pretty simple. And I'm going to link both of those down there in the description. And I'm going to link his huddle. Watch his huddle. And then the reason I'm linking it and the reason I tell you to follow him is he'll update it game by game. So you can actually sit there week by week. And if you're having a bad day, just watch him cook a bunch of DBs. It'll make you smile. It'll make you laugh. He'll be juking people. It's fantastic. So make sure you follow him on both platforms. You can keep up with him and keep up with Western. Thank you so much, bro, for coming on the channel. I cannot wait to see what you do for the rest of this year. When you finish your junior year, we will come back and do it again. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on the channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Go follow Kobe right now. Trust me, you're going to want to keep up with him. We out.